I don't know what my deal is today. I could I could use another cup of coffee or a soda or something, but like I, it got me thinking just now. Those little caffeine packet things I sent you the other day. Like, have you ever oh. seen those before? Every so often they pop up in like my Instagram feed. You know, for those wondering what the heck I'm talking about, it, it almost looks like a um, a tin of of you know chewing tobacco with these little pouches in it that have caffeine. It's like straight caffeine, you know, ground coffee grounds in these things that you chew on or, you know, while you're out. I'm like, that could work fishing. I could use it right now too. They're literally, it literally looks like a tin of tobacco and they're yeah. little pouches that you stick in your lip yeah. of ground coffee. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm almost like maybe by the time this episode would come out, I'll have ordered some because like I said, every so often they start popping up in my feed. Somehow Instagram knows that I'm fishing again, that I'm doing these late night runs, that I could use a little pick me up and like, you know, I bring water with me when I'm fishing, but that doesn't really give me the energy boost. And I don't do, uh, you know, monsters or five hours or anything like that. And I really think, you know, if it's, I guess, safe. <laughs> Because really, how bad yeah, right. would it be um, to throw the little caffeine pouch, you know, the the coffee ground pouch in while you're fishing? And they have some it's, cool flavors. It's so it's it's so weird. I saw it was like 75 milligrams of caffeine, which 75 milligrams of caffeine is not very much. Like that's like a that was on these things that I sent you. Yes, exactly. Was that the regular packs or the double packs? Because you see, there's the regular one oh. X and a two X caffeine. I don't know. It said up to it said up to seventy five. So maybe the two X's are seventy five, yeah. which actually isn't. Yeah, one fifty, one fifty at once like that, where you're like sucking on it like that, and it's not having to like go through your stomach. That'd be pretty. That's pretty serious. Yeah, because uh, it it goes right into your bloodstream. It's just like yes. packing a lip of tobacco. I mean, it's going straight in. So that's why I'm like, I wonder if it's safe. <laughs> but yeah, for real. Well, so you should say. So first of all. If people haven't heard the, of this, I've reviewed it in Surfcasters Journal, but you should look up Awake Chocolates, A-W-A-K-E, Awake. Caffeinated chocolates, they taste fantastic, 50 milligrams of caffeine, they're great. Don't stick them in your waiter pocket because they'll melt. <laughs> but other than that, they're really good. But um, we're way off topic for today's topic, but that's okay. Hmm. Uh, have you ever done no dose or anything like that during surf fishing? No, like I said, the, the the furthest I went was I'd do a five hour energy to start the night and I'd keep a second in my waiter in my, my um, stormer pouch. If mm. I started to slow down, I'd kick that, which I mean, two five hour energies in like a three hour span is not good. <laughs> well, so there is a, a, a caffeine pill called Jet Alert. Uh, it is like no dose, but they're 100 milligram tablets. Mm. And me and my buddy a few times when we could we used to do like these epic trips where we would camp or we would you know we'd go in the fall and we'd fish for 12 hours and then get three hours of sleep and then fish all day long too and then fish for 12. and i took some jet alerts i on the cape actually a couple of times and i was tripping <laughs> when you take that much caffeine and you're that tired i was fully hallucinating and i'll never forget one of the nights it happened there was tons of bioluminescence i mean just a ton of it in the water and the fish were following our pl our plugs right to our feet, but they weren't striking. So you get mm. these big streams of light through the water. Ugh. And I was tripping balls. I was off in the freaking stratosphere from this freaking jet alert. I was so caffeinated. And my buddy's like, dude, dude, I don't feel okay. <laughs> I don't feel okay. And I'm like, me neither, man. And then we had to, we, were, we had walked so far and we had to walk all the way back and we were so sick oh. the next day. It was just like we were hungover. Yeah. So. Uh, that's the thing I would worry about with those patches, but I'll still try it. I'll still try yeah, so I just looked it up while you're talking. The ones I was looking at, they're called grinds, G-R-I-N-D-S. So yeah, interesting. If I anyone knows if... for sure that's listening, has tried them or something similar, let us know. And like I said, I mean, I'll probably before I actually order them, look up to see if they're ha just how safe they are. Uh, other than the fact that they're just a little pouch of you know coffee grounds in your lip, but let us know your thoughts on them or something else because. Like I said, I used to do the monster energies, the five hour energies, got a little heart That's issue these me. days. Don't know if that helped. So, you know, you yeah, get those, older and you got to think yeah. about these stupid things. Yeah, the, those those things really, for whatever reason, those things definitely do a lot worse. You know, one, one final thing on the grinds. I like that it says all of them. 
our products contain no nicotine because yes. they look just like tobacco. They it's do. funny, like huge letters, like everywhere. No nicotine, mm-hmm. totally safe. <laughs> and like 30 flavors. So, I mean, I'm intrigued. You know, there's, I think there's an 11 pack of flavors for like forty nine ninety five. So like, that's the one that's sucking me in. You know, I'm not going to do the math up, but like... 50 bucks, something to try, maybe it'll work. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll, maybe we'll report back that that's funny. So yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so somebody key us in if you've tried it. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that and keying us in, yes. today's episode, we're actually going to be answering a question that someone sent in when we asked for questions the last time. But we thought maybe we could talk about it for a few minutes longer than we would have if we just answered it in passing. Mm-hmm. And the question was sent to me, so I'll say it, Toby. Yeah. Um, one of our listeners, Gabe, was kind enough to send us in this question directly. And he said, hey, you know, does the use of a clip, and you and I use Tactical Air Angler clips, Mm -hmm. of a clip remove the need for a split ring at the front of your plug? And that was the end, that was the question. And I phrased it to you, and you immediately felt even more strongly about it than I did. So I'll let you start Mm -hmm. with your answer to the question. So my use of a split ring in conjunction with a snap has changed over time. Right now, as you said, we're using the tactical angler clips, like the, what size is it? You know, you probably- 125. 125. That's I use the 125. The, some people like to use the bigger size, which is, yeah. I forget, it's 200 or something. Yeah. And some people use the 75s, but for most people in the surf, you're gonna wanna use the 125. Yeah, I when I was, when standard rig deals were still allowed and i was using you know the big j hooks i used the i had one pack of the big ones for that situation yeah they might be 175 now that i think about it but they're they're the biggest size is the we use the one size down for yeah the second yeah not the biggest second out so that's what i'm using i will say 99.9 percent of the time if i'm using a snap absolutely that's what i'm using and i never with that clip use a split ring on the nose of my plugs, whether that plug came from the manufacturer with a split ring, if it didn't, if it came with string or a piece of cheese, I don't care. I'm not (laughs) putting the split ring on the nose of my plug if I'm using the tactical angler clip, Um, which is contrary to what I used to do, which I'll get in after, but my reasoning is sort of twofold. One, I don't feel there's a need for it on there, meaning I've already got the hinge, the movement that I want, the ease of changing is already there with the snap. And to be completely honest, I find it almost difficult to get the paperclip style snap, the tactical angler clip on a split ring. For me, it's way easier to get it on with the solid nose ring, you know, the nose wire, excuse me, whatever plug I'm using. So, I mean, that's my short answer on what I'm doing now. (laughs) So my question for you is then on something like a Redfin, do you take you actually take the split ring off the front of it yes so when i i have um two containers of split rings on actually it's on my desk my work desk here uh one are the ones that i actually use for the hooks they're the roscoe 6.5 h's those are my standard split rings that go on that attach hooks to plugs if i pull split rings off of a plug and i don't know what model it is or i can see that it's you know, inferior or it just came off a nose, they go into a secondary container that I have. And that's what I attach my tail flags with. So I save them Oh, because nice. I, they're usually not the high quality split rings in the first place. You know, if I get it, let's take the Redfin example. It's got three split rings, two hooks. So the hooks come off to start. <laughs> then the nose split ring and the belly split ring come off and go on my, my backup. I leave the tail on cause I, the tail split ring because there's no hook on there and get the flag and then I put the six and a half H's on the belly and I go straight snap to the nose on the red fin. So that's, that's where my mod mods on a standard unloaded red fin would go in regards to the clip. So it's interesting. Um, I am pretty meticulous. I think about things. I really don't like to leave things alone. I have to know why I'm constantly fiddling, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to the split ring on the front of the plug, I generally just leave it whatever it is. So in particular, like a red fin, if it comes with the split ring on it, I'll attach it to it. Mm. But I have some, like I actually, this is not planned, I swear, this is not planned. And for people who are listening, they're not gonna be able to see anyways. But I have a red fin sitting on my desk and there's no split ring on the front of it because I took it off. Because I thought of it and I was like, "Ah, I'm just gonna take that off, I don't need it. Because it is an extra piece of complication and it is something that can fail. And I don't think you need it. But if something like a, I don't know, an SP minnow or, you know, a smaller swimmer, 
like some, some of the smaller swimmers, if they come with a split ring on them, I think they can help them perform a little bit because they are so much smaller and they, you know, the, the, the movement is tighter. They're much more um, subject to being tamped down by not having the same level of movement that you might get with the split ring and the tactical ring clips. I might leave it on there, mm. but I'm not going to go out of my way to experiment with and make sure that they do or they don't. And, you know, is this perfect? And am I tuning my plug by having the split ring or not on one of those things? Because first of all, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I, I'm with you. I think the tactical ankle clip by itself gives the plug enough movement. You don't need the split ring. Mm -hmm. But second of all, honestly, if I'm using one of those things, I'm probably not being that serious. And I'm probably not really trying to catch something that big enough that makes a much of a difference anyways. And I'm assuming if they're going to hit something like that, they're probably being pretty aggressive and on, you know, active stuff. So it probably isn't that nuanced. Mm -hmm. That's probably me not being meticulous enough. That's probably not me being careful enough because I could see someone saying, well, but there was this one bite where I had the whatever thing bomber and I'm trying not to use the SP Mino, the bomber and they, they, I had no split ring and my buddy had the split ring and I was catching fish and he wasn't. I'm sure that that exists somewhere, but for me, most of the time, I don't think it matters that much, but I don't go out of my way oftentimes to take them off. What I definitely don't do is I definitely don't put them on. I, I don't think I, I can't think of one example where I went out of my way to put a split ring on a plug on the nose. Yeah, on the nose. On the nose. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I usually strip off all of the hardware like you and start over mm -hmm. on almost everything. But even even Super Strike, strip it all off and start over. But I don't ever put them on. That's that's for sure. It's, there's just no need. Yeah, it, it's funny. I I yeah, I think it, I don't any and I no longer add them when it's not coming from the factory that way. But I used to. And that's where I said there was a time, you know. The yeah, so tell me about that. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah, talk about so, that. These are the days before, and I always refer to it the, before the paperclip style snap, because originally I believe it was Breakaway, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes. was the first one that yes. hit the market. Still, still make good ones. Yeah. They're, they're a little bit different, but they're still, yeah. Yep. Um, and that was the first that I experimented with and took some time to transition them in. But prior to that, which has got to be around 2000 range, early 2000s those came somewhere in that area so Something before like that yeah so before that i ran two different kinds of snaps um the duo lock and the cross lock they're similar but very different um and i didn't have a good reason for using one or the other so i kind of like they were both interchangeable even though they were drastically different in their their failure rates the the duo lock failed a lot um and that concept of the failure of it happening often enough was one of the two reasons why I would actually add a split ring to the nose of a plug if it didn't come with it. If it was on there, I would leave it. Um, but if it wasn't on there, a lot of times I would add it, two reasons. One, sometimes it's tough to get the big hook wire on the nose of a plug if it's that a little deep, turn at the end yeah right? like it's yeah. just the, the the geometry didn't work sometimes like on some poppers with a cup if it was a if it was a good size cup and a short wire sometimes you'd have to add it to get it in and like some of the older wooden gibbs polaris poppers some would have a deep cup some wouldn't so like sometimes i've had to add it and not add it and, and so that was to get it in there but what i also found that it did with using those duo locks is a lot of the failures on the duo locks occurred because they're so big they would get locked in and you could get leverage the fish could right. easily get the leverage on you even on a bomber or a needlefish it just it, it was easy to get leverage so i would actually add the split ring in that scenario because it would give me a little more twist and turn before it would start opening up similar to how like i run two split rings on the belly of a lot of my um rigid exactly. belly hanger plugs exactly i do the two split rings there to the hook exactly yeah like, like for those of you watching you can see on the youtube side it goes belly hanger on a red fin split ring split ring hook that lets it turn and twist and less likely to tear out so i found that by adding that split ring to the nose of my plugs when i was using the dual locks it would afford me I still had them open and bend and get torqued, but I landed more fish that I felt there was a good chance I might not have. So like before, you know, that it's that that timeline. If you're looking at my timeline of split ring on the nose, it was 
almost all the time then the breakaway paperclip style and then it faded right out so i mean it's a hard it was probably within a season that i made the official transition and now i mean you look through my plugs now and there's i don't think there is any that have a split ring on the nose right now i'd be shocked if you found one <laughs> yeah interesting that's really interesting you know the thing is too again there's no i can see some people being like wow you know blah, 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 I, I need to do this and blah, blah, blah. that's fine that's fine you do you we're not saying you know you're right or we're wrong and there's you know different solutions to the same problems but i want to we're not going to get into time direct because that's maybe a whole nother conversation yeah. that gets much longer but i do want to say you know a lot of people complain about the clips and and they're like oh i lost this plug and oh it comes off but like you're talking about those do snaps those things failed all the time constantly constantly failing and then you're 100 percent insured to lose your plug let alone your fish right i mean that that's yeah. definitely true can we agree on this oh yeah the <laughs> the only time i ever had a duo lock fail and i still landed the fish I have a picture and maybe I'll try to find it and post it on our Instagram for everybody once this video comes out. It, it's in my archive somewhere. I had um, the, the, it was a red fin, it was taken deep by a fish. The red fin pulled off of the dual lock and then the dual lock, that stupid little hook, hooked the fish's mouth and I landed the fish with it stretched out, just hooked up on it. I've heard a couple of guys that that's happened to. So that was the only time the failure actually saved it after it, it, it saved itself. But that's yeah. Funny. I've actually Usually landed when a they fish. go, they go. I've actually landed a fish on the tactical anchor clip. It actually clipped. Through clipped the fish in. I've, I've yes. seen that happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times. It's so bizarre. I mean, I still had the plug was on there and everything, but mm. it, it's, it's so bizarre. But the thing I, I don't want again, we're not going to get into tying direct. But the thing I do want to say is that whenever I see, and again, I'm probably going to get hate mail for this, but it's okay. Whenever I see someone tying direct to a split ring, I just think. You know, oh, I don't trust the clip and I don't want to use the clip and whatever. All I think is that when you're tying directly to that split ring, if that knot moves back and forth and catches that edge of that split ring, you're just going to get cut off. You're just going, mm -hmm. you're just wearing that down. And unless you're very meticulous, you're checking that constantly and retying, you know, and keeping an eye on it, it's going to happen. And not only that, even if you check it every time and retie, it can happen that one time you have a 50 when it's out in the water. Mm -hmm. so honestly when i see that and i see okay you're going to be tying anyways i don't know why more guys don't use a loop knot i understand that you're like well they're not strong and you know this and that and the other thing i'm gonna i'm gonna go with a loop knot mm -hmm. that doesn't have a sharp edge of a split ring directly to the eye of the plug yeah because then i know if i, I i'm gonna use maybe i'll instead of using 50 now i'll go to 80 pound braid i mean 80 pound liter and then I know I have the horsepower and there's no chance of a sharp edge. And I don't know why there's that disconnect. Like, okay, I understand. You, you don't trust the tactical angle clip. You don't want to do that. You have, you know, you've been doing your thing forever and it works. You don't want to change it. That's a justifiable thing. Why, why fix what works? That's fine. I mean, you and I could get into a, a, a 45 minute long conversation about why it's so important to be able to change the plug. The second you want to change the plug and have no resistance to that at all. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to retie. Right. Uh -huh. We could talk about that forever. So, but, but, you know, you do you, and if you want to tie direct, but then if you want to tie direct, why not use a loop knot? You're going to get as much or better action out of your plug. Mm -hmm. And now you have no sharp edge. Am I way off base, Toby? No, not at all. And I, it's funny that like, I don't know what that you will, there, there's several different loop knots for sure. There's some that are far better than others. And I tie a couple different ones. I use them all the time when I'm black fishing. Um, mm by boat or kayak with jigs and i don't know why i started using a loop knot but that's some major that's some serious uh uh you know extremes with the rocks with the fish pulling and Tons i use that work yeah and anywhere from 20 pound liter material when i'm like finesse black fishing which is a thing all the way up to 60. i'd never have had my when i've broken them off it's not because that loop knot broke and I don't, and I tie a couple of different ones. And I know even one I tie, it's not being tied right. So I'm sure it's, it, it's still, like you said, stronger. And I would have a hundred times more confidence in that than tying direct to a split ring in the middle of the night, hoping that I got it in the right spot and not over that little edge. Like, yeah, it, it, I think maybe guys are just intimidated by having to try to tie a loop knot 
repeatedly over and over at night. But again, you're going to get used to it. Like I could yeah, tie a, I, yeah. I could tie a, a, a approved clinch knot with my eyes closed, you know, in the complete darkness, no problem. And I've tied that loop knot enough times where I'm pretty damn close to that too. So it's just like anything else. You'll get used to it. And the, be- the more you tie any knot, the more confidence you have and the better you are at tying it as well. That's right. And I think, again, I don't want to, I don't want to represent myself as knowing anything about tarpon fishing because I, I'm sort of just in the beginnings of my journey with all of that. But that has proven to me that the loop knot is plenty strong enough because mm-hmm. when I'm down there, I do tie direct because I do want just that one, they're such bastards. And I just want that one tiny fraction of a difference of weakness taken out. So I don't use a clip, I tie direct. And I use a loop knot and I have had everything else go wrong. And I've yet to actually break a loop knot. I've mm-hmm. bent the hooks and I've, you know, mangled the hooks and I've had it break at the braid and I've done this and they've chafed me off and, you know, all this stuff, but I've not had the actual knot fail. And I'm telling you, if you can land even a 30 pound tarpon, there's no, <laughs> there's no bass out there, even mm-hmm. 80 pounds that you're going to have any trouble with. And it just feels like, you know, I hate hypocrisy. And if you're telling me that you don't want to use a clip because you don't trust it, then I don't trust your split ring. And I don't know how maybe you can, but that that's okay. If you trust it and it's worked for you for 30 or 40 years, then fine. But I think you really should consider trying a tactical angle clip or breakaway or whatever. And if you do that, there's no reason for a split ring, right, Toby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's one last thing to deal with one last potential for failure and simplify the whole game simplify the whole game this has been a weekly edition of the surfcast podcast you can find out more about the podcast at surfcastpodcast.com or definitely check us out on social media facebook instagram at the surfcast podcast